But here I is. It's nice and early. It's about 20 past 8 in the morning. 20 past 8 in the morning. For me. My God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, give it a couple of weeks ago. I was in bed till way after that. Yeah, because of the waking up during the night stuff. Yeah. I just, yeah, I, I wasn't even anywhere near up at this time of day, yet I'm out. I was up at six something, at twenty past six. Twenty past six! I didn't even realise there was a th another twenty past six. I knew there was one in the evening, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> right, this uh, episode will be on um, just being real. Yeah, be guided by the Holy Spirit, but be real. Yeah, based upon the fact that, that there are people you know who sort of, yeah, yeah, you can talk to them about God a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, but they won't really open up. Now, there's going to be a key that's going to open them up. Be guided by God, but Crossing that key could be something that you think is going to be ridiculous. That you think, no, no, Lord, come on, I can't talk about that with this person. That will be the thing that's going to open up their door. It's going to open up their heart. It'd be that thing that, when it's suggested by God, when you get that little suggestion, talk about that, you're going to be thinking, Lord, really? We all have hurt and we all have scars. Quite often with people, if they're going through it, they just need to know that it's not just them. That you've not only had similar experiences, but you've gone through it. You've come through the other side. God has helped you. So sharing something like that with someone, if you recognise that person has gone going through something you've gone through before, share. Share what God has done for you. Yeah? Don't share it in a way of, oh, can I just tell you what God has done for me? Just share it. Just tell the truth about what happened. Give the glory to God at the end. Yeah. Let them know that you understand. But the problem is, when people just say, oh, I understand. Oh, I understand. That means nothing. If you say, oh, yeah, I've been through similar. I know you then understand because you've been through similar. You simply saying you understand means nothing at all. Demonstrate you understand. If you are no, you might not understand, but then don't fake a story, obviously. <laughs> no, don't do that. Um, yeah. There's a song called uh, One Awkward Moment by Casting Clowns. It's talking about that. It's talking about, you know, sharing that sort of stuff could be the thing that saves a life. Now, you, you might need to share something that is painful, that is still a bit raw, that hurts you to talk about. But that could be the thing that saves that person's life. Would it be worth it? Yeah. Of course. We are so, you know, we try and be so careful. We try and, well, some do. Not me. <laughs> Not me. Well, that, yeah, to a certain degree, I probably do. But we, we try to paint this picture of us being perfect little Christians. Yeah. We're all sunny and happy and smiley all the time. But that isn't the reality. That's not what we are experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. Not on our quiet times. We're not like that, are we? We're real. You need to be a bit more real to other people, including other Christians. Let me put it this way. There are people in your church who look at you and think, I'd love to be praying for you, but I've got no idea what you need prayer for. Right? Because you look as if you've got it all done. You look as if you've got it all sorted. Well, you haven't. But you look as if you have. So, <laughs> be real. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> yeah.
Yeah. Well, I've shared this before that um, in a um, Christian student union thing, at, at uni, they had a situation once where I wasn't there, just a story I heard, but um, there was somebody in the room who wasn't a Christian. They'd just gone along to see what this Christian union stuff was about. And they said, okay, God, if you're real, get someone to stand up and say orange. And so, a few lines away, you know, seats away, God told this person to stand up and say orange. And the person's going, Lord, are you kidding me? You want me to stand up and say orange? Is there any particular reason? You know? Or next week, do you want me to stand up and say yellow? Or red? Or magenta? Or magenta? Yeah, that's a good one. See? <laughs> yeah, I'm more clever than I thought. More clever? No, no, that knackers that, doesn't it? <laughs> so the person stood up. The person said orange. Then the person that had asked God to get someone to do that just started crying. And of course, they were then helped and, you know, helped to give their life to God. And that was a big thing that opened up that person's heart. And it was someone who was told to do something that came across as quite ridiculous. Yeah. But it's not just with non-Christians, it's also with young Christians. You've got young Christians who are incredibly young, who don't really understand what this is all about yet. And they need the older Christians to be real, to be honest with them about Christian life. Stop trying to fake it, stop trying to pretend that, oh, it's absolutely wonderful. It's not, it's hard. It's very big and hard. You know, it's not easy in any way, shape or form. It's, it, there are wonderful moments, absolutely. And hopefully we're going to get to a point where we have a lot more of the wonderful moments. Yeah. But let's be honest about the journey. The journey is tough. You know, certainly if your journey isn't tough, then why? It says a lot about you, doesn't it, really? Maybe you're not going down the path that God wants you to go down. Because your journey should be tough. It should be hard. It should be you know, dealing with you. You know, so, uh, you know, I'm not anywhere near perfect, you know, even with regard to this stuff, you know, doing these videos. You know, sometimes I say things and it's a bit too sharp, you know. And it can feel to people who can feel like I've, I've got all guns out blazing and all this sort of stuff. It's not personal. Yeah. Part of it is, certainly for me, it's about learning how to control the frustration and the passion and yeah, the emotions and even the spiritual sort of frustration and stuff like that. Um, Yeah, prayerfully going over stuff first and then maybe doing a video. But the reason why I do it the way I do it is because I can't stand the, this whole idea of preparing a message. I never prepare a message. You know, sometimes I, I speak to God about the situation and, okay, Lord, how do you want me to go with that? And then, okay, let's, let's begin and see how this leads. Yeah. <laughs> but, so... Yeah, but even that, be honest about your failures, be honest about the fact that you haven't got it right, the fact you're learning as you're going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but God's dealing with, with me anyway with regards to um, <laughs> softening me a tiny bit, yeah. So, um, there you go. So hopefully the sharpness will be tinged down a tiny bit. Hopefully he's fine off the edges of that a bit. <laughs> yeah, never know. Yeah. All right, good worship today. And I shared some songs with Craig, so that was nice. Bye. 
Hi. Well, I did a video last time I was here about, um, well, the first bit was angels, second bit was, um, uh, is it wrong to expect a church to be led by God or to do things in God's way? That's speaking about um, the fact that he was sort of questioning whether I should really be coming to the uh, finish station because of what I said before. Now, he may think that, oh, he's having a go at me again in that one. No, because in that one, I also share in that one about my failings. I also share in that one about my standards that are too low. And the reality is that if you listen to that one, and then you listen to this one, understand that what I'm basically saying in that one is that we all have areas where our standards are too low. Now, this is where it could be... Well, this, no, I'm, I'm not going to go into more detail about that. I did get something last night, but I'm not sure if that's correct or that's of God. Um, we'll put it this way. Saturday gone. Not Saturday just gone, but Saturday gone before. I went to that Christian thing. I saw that Matthew 22, 36 to 38. Now, that's something I've read so many times, but I didn't get it until then. Yeah, when I saw it up on the wall there, I got it. It just made complete sense. Now, for me, I was someone who, certainly as a younger Christian and even as an older Christian, I didn't love me. I didn't. Um, I didn't receive God's love because it's like, well, you know, if I don't love me, why on earth would he? Sort of thing. Um, and I wasn't loving really towards God because, you know, if you don't love yourself, you really can't love others. That's part of it. Um, I didn't hate myself, I just didn't particularly love myself, you know. Um, brought up very British. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah. So, I think God started working on that about four years ago. And, yeah. Matthew 22, 36 to 38 was what I needed to hopefully push me properly into that and understanding that in a fuller way. And so, yeah. But that's the point. I shared that. On that day, I did videos talking about that. Um, and some of the videos I was doing was quite painful to do. But the reason why I share stuff that's quite painful to do is because it may help someone else. Maybe that's the awkward moment. Maybe that's the, the pain and the scar that I have that could open up someone's heart. Maybe. In the end, it's not for me to know, it's for God to know. It's for God to use that in whatever way he wants to. That's the reality. Oh, and don't think I'm some sort of special, and I'm saying I'm some special because I did that. No. No. That was God who basically was pushing me to do that. Yeah. That's why the channel is called a normal Christian, because it's talking about normal stuff. It's talking about stuff that normal Christians go through. And so, yeah. Who gave me the name for that? God. God gave me the name for that. Yeah, if I thought I was something special, it wouldn't be called a normal Christian, it'd be called an excellent Christian, wouldn't it, really? <laughs> and the name is not going to be changed. <laughs> not to that, at least. No. Oh, dear. <sighs> it may be changed at some point to a normal Christian with an excellent God. That'd be a good name change, wouldn't it? A normal Christian with an excellent God. There you go. Oh, that's not a bad name change for the channel. Yeah. Yeah, I may do that at some point. <laughs> See how God leads, really. Huh? Oh, dear. Ah, oh, folks. Yeah, the reality is... Yeah. We all fall short. 
that's the situation. We all fall short. We all have areas that we need to improve upon and get dealt with. And, yeah, be honest about that. With yourself and yeah, with others. Certainly don't ever try and pretend that you are further along than you really are because, as I say, there are people that want to pray for you. Let them know what you need prayer for. Yeah? If you're a Christian, don't, don't try and do it on your own. Don't try and pretend that you're strong when you're not. Yeah? We're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I did some training yesterday at home, just did the uh, chest press with the ones I've got. So I've got no idea how much they weigh. I used to have a set of scales, but <laughs> no idea where they've gone. I imagine they've been chucked uh, a long time ago. Uh, so I don't have a set of scales anymore. But I don't, I'm not sure if they make the matter of a difference anyway. Um, I think they, they're at least 38 kilograms. They could be 40 kilogram dumbbells, I'm not sure. But anyway, I, I did them yesterday. I, I did the video saying I did eight, eight and six reps. So that was okay, not too bad. Then I went to the gym and I thought, I'm gonna try and do 42. Because, you know, I'm doing at least 38 and that was comfortable, that was okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not strong. <laughs> that 42 is a whole different level. It's insane. The difference between 38 and 42 is just insane. Uh, I've done 42 before, so I know I can do 42. Uh, I got it in position, got back, got it in position on the chest, just couldn't push. I had nothing at all. Nothing at all. So it's like, right, okay. <laughs> totally embarrassing, but there was hardly anyone there, so it didn't really matter. Um, if there was people there, it wouldn't really matter. So, yeah. But the reason is, uh, partly, I, I worked out earlier. So that could be part of the reason why I just didn't have enough. Um, also, first day of fasting. So therefore, I'm not eating that day. So maybe less energy than what I could have had. So then when I got home, I thought, we'll try and do the ones I did earlier. Again, nothing. Couldn't do it. <laughs> there was nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, <laughs> I did do a few um, chest, uh, just basically, did some flies working on the outside of the chest of it. This was light. I did obviously the rear shoulders again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got to sort the posture out, really. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, it's been like it for years. So, yeah. Oh, I've got awful posture. Terrible posture. Yeah. Got to deal with that. But actually, that's the point. Working on the rear shoulders does bring your shoulders back a tiny bit, which does help with your posture a tiny bit. Yeah, it's not, not miracle working, but uh, it does okay. That's fine. Yeah. Indeed, yes. So, yeah. I say, don't pretend you're strong when you're not, because it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work with regards to emotionally, it doesn't work with regards to physically, but <laughs> there you go, I shared that story. There you go. Have a laugh. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, I'll get there. I'll get there. Yeah. Well that's if I still continue with the with the goal of getting the fifty K dumbbells. Which I may do or may not, I don't know. Yeah, time will tell. There's someone with a doggy. I think they're going a different direction. They're going upwards. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, so, certainly one thing as a certainty, you've got to be honest, when you need help, let people know. As I've been saying, yeah, make sure you've got those people, the right people. Now, it's no good being in church and saying, oh, but all these people are... No, 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 they're not. They really are not, no. You may think that's the case, but they really are not. They're just human, right? They're just like any other person. Just because they go to a church, it doesn't mean they're special. 
a special sort of friendship. No. No, unfortunately, no, that isn't the case. You've got the normal friendship that anyone else would have with these people. So don't think just because they're going to church that they're going to be there for you if your world suddenly collapses, because they're not. That's the reality. You, you see that all the time. Listen to people's stories when things do go wrong. And they see that the church really wasn't there for them. That's a common thing. Don't worry about it. It's the way it is. That's where they are right now. That could be where the church is. I'm not saying the church you're in is like that, but most are. But that's okay. They're human. That's where they are. Yeah? Do we really work on the fact that we are a Christian family? Honestly, do we really in church focus on the fact that we are a Christian family, we are responsible for each other? Do we do that? No, not really. So therefore, don't expect people to want to be responsible for you when things start going wrong. Find the people in your friendships. Yeah, work out which ones are going to be there for you. Okay? I guarantee you, if things go wrong, you're going to appreciate the fact that you figured out these people way in advance. That doesn't mean you ignore the other relationships. You try and build them up to be relationships that can be equally as good in that way. Yeah. far too many people that have a, they try and be positive with regards to church, but the problem is they're being far too unrealistically positive. Put it back a tiny bit, at least a tiny bit. Yeah, be realistic about it. See these other people in church? They're human, right? They go through stuff, they've got their issues. We all have. So, yeah. So pray for them as well. Get to know them. Get to know their issues. That's why I say, oh, the church I was in previously in, um, in Dorset. Yes. Now, I'm not going to name and shame the church. It's not the right thing to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but I said to the pastor right before I left the church, really, um, I've been there for a good sort of eight months. I said to the pastor that uh, I think God's telling me it'd be a great idea for you in this church to have everybody praying for someone else. So everybody's being prayed for and everybody's praying for somebody. Yeah, give a different name to every person. You know, they can then ask that person for their phone number so they can keep in contact, find out what their prayer needs are and you know, get to know them. And then after six months, change the names around. You know, you now pray for someone else. That way you get to know other people in your church, you get to be praying for them, and you know there's people praying for you, because guarantee you one thing, the first person that was praying for you that had your name is still probably praying for you, and you're probably still praying for them. Right? Plus this next person you're praying for as well. So now you're praying for the members of your church, and they're praying for you. Of course, the pastor said, no. No, we don't want to do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, what can you do? You know, God says, go and say that. You say that, and then they go, no. It's like, okay. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it, really. You just, you just give what God has told you to give. And, yeah. You just say, right, okay, no worries. You take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. right. That's it, folks. Just be honest. You've got to be honest with yourself about where you are, as in, you know, in your relationship with God, in your relationship with your friends, with, with regards to your church. As in, you know, don't overestimate the the um, functionality or the righteousness or the you know, whatever it is about your church. You know, again, positive, fine, but a bit of realism is also fantastic. Be realistic. Certainly yourself. You know, be, be
be positive when you're talking to non-Christians about your church, that's fine, but not overly so, because if they come to your church, they're soon going to figure out, you're blinking deluded. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. So down with the over-positive stuff, you know? But with yourself, you've got to be realistic. Because you've got to know what to pray for. If you're being overly positive, then you're not knowing what to pray for. Generally speaking, when I do videos about the church, I'm not trying to slam the church, I'm not trying to slam any particular organisation. Without saying it, I'm sort of saying, this is where the prayers need to be. This is what you need to pray about, because I'm pointing out there's issues here, you need to pray about this stuff. You know? Yeah. Maybe I should say that when I do the videos. <laughs> See, not perfect, no. That's it. I mean, the point about being honest and about highlighting the issues is about saying these things need to be prayed about. We need to seek God on these issues. Yeah? I mean, the, oh, one thing that has really annoyed me with regards to Christians over the years is that when they say, oh, we're just waiting for revival. As in, we won't bother to try and sort our church out. <laughs> Because we're just waiting for God to bring a revival that's going to sort our church out. But that revival is going to start somewhere else with people who are actually bothered to sort their churches out. It's like, excuse me, you do hear yourself, don't you really? You're waiting for revival. You do realise you're supposed to start somewhere. Why not there in you? Yeah. Arr. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine if I looked hard enough, I could probably still find footprints of my dogs in the sand. I'm not going to, but I imagine I probably could. I just see footprints of dogs in the sand. There's probably still footprints of my dogs in the sand somewhere. Yeah. Well, there would be. We come down here all the time. But then again, so do other people. Eh, there might be one still. There might be one footprint from one of my dogs still in the sand. That hasn't been disturbed yet. Hi. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, there you go, folks. Look. Hopefully, this subject will be seen as a bit... Uh, of a bright one. Well, no, I, I prayed earlier today, well, last night even, saying to God, need new subjects. Need to get away from this sort of what people think of me bashing the church. Yeah. Need to get away from that a bit. Need a new subject, Lord. And so, of course, put the praise and worship on today, or the messages one, which is praise and worship, basically. Um, and one awkward moment was the first time to come on. So, oh, something also brilliant that happened earlier. I was, um, <laughs> yeah. okay, it's probably just a coincidence, but you never know. I was hovering over a certain song because I got it on shuffle on uh, Windows Media Player. So, there was a home free song of How Great There Aren't, which was, I think, the Elvis Presley version. I was hovering over it thinking. Excuse me, is that Elvis Presley singing or is that them singing his version? And it just so happened that that was a song that was chosen next on the shuffle. So, okay, <laughs> that's weird. But okay, good, Christy Wushty. Yeah, enjoy that. Oh, um, go on to YouTube, look at Home Free. As in H O M E F R W E. Um, it's an American group, um, a cappella singers, um, sort of a cappella. Uh, there's a few that sing in quite high notes, one that sings an incredibly low note. Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And when they do the ones like How Great There Art and Amazing Grace, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, just beautiful. So there you go, I plugged in. Enjoy. Go and listen to them. 
enjoy that. And the song of Welcome Moment, I'm going to include that with this uh, description for this video. You take care, God bless, I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.